Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. We often think about dietary things like sugar and milk and chocolate and whey when we talk about acne, but what about omega-3s? In this video, I want to break down a recent study that sheds light into the potential role of omega-3 in the development of acne. For those who are new to the channel, I'm Dr. John Barbieri. I'm a board-certified dermatologist and acne expert. Now, this recent study, which was published in the British Journal of Dermatology, uses a special technique called Mendelian randomization. This technique tries to take advantage of the fact that we don't really choose our genes. So we can try to understand if having genes that predispose to certain exposures might lead to outcomes and try to get rid of some of the noise that often confounds these studies. For instance, if we want to try and understand does eating fish impact our risk of acne, well, people who eat fish might be really different than people who don't eat fish in a whole bunch of ways that might make it hard to understand that relative effect. However, because we don't pick our genes, it helps to control for those other exposures that might happen in our lives. What they did in the study is they looked at people who have genes that predispose them to be more likely to have different omega-3 and 6 fatty acids. And what they found is that those who have a genetic predisposition to higher levels of omega-3 fatty acids have a lower incidence of acne. Similarly, people who have a higher ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 fatty acids have a decreased risk of acne. And they found that those who have genes that predispose to higher levels of linoleic acid and omega-6 fatty acid have higher rates of acne. So this study is really interesting because it helps to get around one of the common issues that can make it challenging to interpret literature on diet and acne. Obviously, we'd love to have a randomized controlled trial to look at this, but in the absence of it, we're left with a lot of epidemiology studies that are just saying, hey, people who eat more of this tend to get more of that. And these studies, like I mentioned earlier, can be really prone to confounding, having correlations that aren't causal, where there's some other factor that's driving both things and making it difficult to understand what's really going on. Using this Mendelian randomization technique, these authors are able to help reduce that risk and give us some more insight. These results also align with a recent trial by Ann Gunther and colleagues, where they had 60 individuals adhere to a Mediterranean diet and also take an omega-3 supplement. In this trial, they found that those who adhere to this diet and supplement had reductions in acne over the period of the study. They also found that many individuals with acne who enrolled in the study had a low omega-3 index. They had low omega-3 levels at the start of the study, which improved throughout the course of the study. Now again, this isn't a randomized trial. There's no control group, which does make it hard to interpret. But together, this supports the findings of the Spindelian randomization study. There have also been some smaller trials looking at omega-3 supplementation on its own, which have supported that it may be helpful in acne as well. So why do omega-3s work for acne? Well, one of the first ways that they might work is through anti-inflammatory mechanisms. We know that inflammatory pathways like toll-like receptor signaling are important in acne, and omega-3s might help to turn down the signaling. The anti-inflammatory effects might help to reduce some of that fundamental inflammatory signaling that we see in acne. In addition, omega-3s can help support our skin barrier. We see in studies of isotretinoin that taking omega-3 together with it reduces dryness. And in general, we can see that omega-3 supplementation can help with dry skin. Now, why might this matter for acne? Well, if our skin barrier isn't working well, that means our oil glands have to work extra hard to try to help make more oil to hydrate our skin to help our dysfunctional skin barrier. And so if we can support our skin barrier, put it into a better place, we can reduce stress in the oil gland and reduce the likelihood that we're gonna get clogged pores and acne breakouts. And then finally, omega-3 fatty acids are part of what goes into our oil glands process for making sebum for they're an oil, right? So having more omega-3s in our diet might influence our sebum composition, it might change how our sebum functions, and it might make our sebum work better so it's less likely to clog our pores. In summary, this new study by Bowery Kim and colleagues provides some compelling evidence for the role of omega-3 in acne, and it aligns with some prior research on the topic as well. While randomized control trials are absolutely needed so we can understand whether this really is a causal effect where omega-3 improves acne, and to understand how well does it work on an absolute level, is it a really little effect or is it a bigger effect, it's still something that's a relatively low risk intervention that I think we can add to our list of dietary and nutritional strategies that can help improve acne. Moving beyond omega-3, and I have a bunch of other videos about diet and acne, there's a couple of other low-hanging fruit to consider. The first one would be vitamin D. Similar to what we see with omega-3, 
those with acne tend to have lower vitamin D levels than those without. And there are randomized control trials that support that supplementing vitamin D, and the studies was 1,000 international units a day, in those with acne and low vitamin D levels led to improvements in inflammatory lesions of acne. In addition, low glycemic index diet, so essentially eating less sugar and refined carbohydrates, has also been shown in multiple randomized controlled trials to improve acne. And eating a lower glycemic index diet is likely helpful for our overall health as well, as we see there can be so much harm and damage that can come with eating high sugar diets and lots of processed foods. There's also some more limited evidence that higher chocolate consumption and higher milk con consumption, particularly whey protein, may be associated with acne. The evidence for these dietary associations is much weaker. I think there are things that are reasonable to try, but there are also things that can be enjoyable to eat, like chocolate, or important for our health sometimes, like milk as a good source of calcium and vitamin D for that matter. So I think we have to be thoughtful when it comes to changing these things. Eating more vitamin D, I think it's pretty low risk. Eating less sugar and carbohydrates is probably good for us in general, but completely eliminating dairy and chocolate, those things I think have both lower evidence that they're going to help and also potentially more harm. So for a lot of these dietary things, if one finds them to be helpful, that's great, and it's worth trying to pursue them further. But I think we also don't want to go too far into lots of dietary elimination things and end up potentially causing more harm than good. Now, for those who are looking to get more omega-3 into their diet, there are several ways to do this. The first would be eating more fatty fish. These are a great source of omega-3s and healthy fats in general. Another approach would be to eat things like chia seeds or flax seeds. These tend to have more ALA than DHA and EPA, which may potentially impact their helpfulness for something like acne because they're a little bit of a different kind of omega-3. But these are a nice plant-based source of omega-3s. There are also a number of supplements that are both vegan and non-vegan. There are more fish oil-based ones, there are more algae-based ones, there are a bunch of different ways to try to get omega-3 through supplements and a lot of good options on the market. So in summary, diet plays an important role in acne and something that we should never miss when we're thinking about a comprehensive management approach. It's not gonna take someone from really severe acne that needs a systemic medicine to clear skin, but it can be a great part of an overall treatment regimen. There's emerging evidence that omega-3s play an important role in the development of acne, and eating higher omega-3s through either diet or supplementation may improve acne. We also have other dietary interventions like vitamin D, like eating a lower glycemic index diet, that also have pretty compelling evidence that they can be helpful. For more on these topics, I have some other videos to cover them, and I have a number of other videos on acne treatments more broadly. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Your support really means a lot to me and it's what makes these videos possible. And again, I have a ton of content on diet and acne and other videos that go into some of these other strategies in more detail. Until next time, see ya.